Welcome to the Diesel Wagoneer build. So I know a lot of you have been waiting to hear what I'm going to be doing with this. And we finally have all the pieces here. I got super lucky and scored this chassis of a six inch lift off of Marketplace. So we're gonna be using that. Uh, I haven't decided if I'm gonna actually use this chassis or that one, because uh, this happens to be for a Wagoneer as well. And then we have the engine donor. And this is a 2008 Jeep Grand Cherokee with the three liter diesel. So this is a Mercedes-Benz OM642 V6 turbo diesel. And I really believe that this is a very overlooked swap I mean, especially if you get it in the Jeep platform. Chrysler's done all the work and kind of made it a standalone system for you. So you can see here there's two fuse boxes. One's for the Jeep, one's for the Mercedes engine. So this is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be interesting. There is definitely going to be some hurdles along the way, but uh, we're going to figure those out together. So of course we got to take this for a test drive before we tear it apart. Now some of you guys might be wondering, why would I do another diesel swap? So to answer that question, um, my answer would be why not, for starters. And uh, there's a couple reasons why. With the Wagoneer, we want to be able to take it anywhere and not have to worry about it. Like, take, if we're, say if we're in Colorado and we're up in the mountains in elevation, a turbo diesel is not gonna care at all about elevation um, it's also from what I can see never been done so that, I like that idea I like doing stuff that's different and stuff that uh, no one else has really thought of yet yes there's going to be a lot of stuff to overcome especially with the uh, WA580 or also known as the NAG1 transmission uh, they can be temperamental but people have done the swap and I have an idea how I'm going to do it. I haven't decided what we're going to be doing for a transfer case yet. If I can, I got to do a little more research, figure out if I can get a tail stock from a Jeep JK uh, WA580 transmission and put it on this trans and then that would give me the ability to put a Rubicon transfer case on the back. Again, I still haven't done enough research on that, so I gotta do some figuring out there. Uh, the other nice thing about doing a turbo diesel swap is it's gonna get great highway economy. Yeah, I could get a lot more power out of a LS swap, but it's also gonna burn that much more fuel and with the price of fuel these days, that's something you gotta think about when doing swaps. Now, some of you might be thinking a Mercedes diesel, doesn't that sound like a lot of maintenance? Uh, the answer to that question is yes and no. This particular OM642 does not have a lot of emissions on it, being that it's in a 2008 Jeep. So that's a bonus. And there's a few little things I can do to it, like uh, a swirl valve delete. That uh, That's about the only other thing that goes wrong with these, other than typical breakdowns, which you're gonna have with any engine. But with that being said, that's where I'm at with this diesel swap. And uh, this thing's pretty peppy, actually. I'll give you guys a good zero to 60 here. Here we go. We're going to hit it from the stop.
That's some pretty good pep. And this thing's still stock. Uh, there's, there's possibly plans for a uh, tune down the road, so. So yeah, hope you guys think this is going to be interesting and uh, follow along with the build. I'm excited about it. Like I said, I can't wait to get started. I'm going to start on it next week. Uh, I think the game plan is I'm going to decide which chassis I'm going to use, whether it be the one that's currently under the Wagoneer or the one I just picked up. And then from there, I can start cleaning up whichever chassis I decide to use. Whether, if it's the one in the Wagoneer, I'm just going to pull the body off, drop it on the other chassis, get that one all cleaned up, and then I can start dismantling this and setting the motor and transmission in, getting that mocked up. And the nice thing about having the two chassis is it'll keep it mobile and uh, it'll save me time because I have to uh, roll it out Sunday night and then roll it in Friday night and uh, work weekends on it. So that'll give me some nice flexibility there. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna end this video here. Thanks guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video.